when we're working with exponents, sometimes these things can get very, very large. And especially if we're working with variables, there have to be specific rules that we can follow so that we don't get confused. So our very first rule here says if m and n are positive integers and a is a real number, then a to the m times a to the, this should have been an n there, a to the n will equal a to the m plus n power. Now let's see how that works because this is a little bit confusing here. So if we're looking at uh, this problem that says 4 squared times 4 to the fifth, sometimes it's easier to look at things in number format first. Um, 4 squared literally means 4 times 4. And 4 to the fifth power literally means 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. We are multiplying these two things. So if we could separate them out, we should be able to put them back together again also. We're talking about a base of 4 here and we're multiplying it to itself one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So that means that my exponent here would be a seven. That's what's really going on. Now let's use our rule that we just talked about to see how that happens. We have this problem that says four squared times four to the fifth. We're going to do the exact same one. Well, according to our formula up here, then a to the m times a to the n power, we're supposed to add those exponents. So let's see, that would be a base of 4 to the 2 plus 5 power. And 2 plus 5 would be 7. So we have the exact same thing. This is the rule, and this is why it works. So let's do some examples here. Here we have y squared times y. So looking at our rule, it says if we take the base, which is y, we can add the exponents. Anytime you're multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. So that would be y to the 2 plus 1 power, which is y cubed. Now in our next one, we have negative 5 to the 7th times negative 5 to the 6th. So here again, we're multiplying the same base, which is negative 5, and I need to add those exponents. So I could write that out as 7 plus 6, or we could just add them. 7 plus 6 is 13, so this would be negative 5 to the 13th power. Looking at the next one here, we have 5y to the 4th times 3y. And if you'll remember, uh, uh, this is you know just from doing other problems, there is nothing here but multiplication. This literally says 5 times y to the 4th times 3 times y. Well, multiplication is both commutative and associative. That means we can do it in any order that we want to. So we could literally rearrange these and say, well, that's the same thing as saying 5 times 3 times y to the 4th times y. And now we can multiply numbers together. 5 times 3 would be 15. And if we use our rule for exponents, when we multiply like bases, we would have to add the exponents. So 4 plus 1 would be 5. So we're talking about 15y to the fifth. In our next problem here, we have, um, we have the same type of situation. We have all multiplication going on here. Now, without writing it out and rearranging it, let's try and save some steps here, and let's multiply our x's together. When we multiply our x's together, we're multiplying like bases, so we add the exponents. 9 and 10 would be 19. When we deal with our y's, we would have to add the exponents again, and that would be y to the fifth. Our last problem here, we have three items multiplied together. Our rules are still the same. Let's multiply our numbers together, which would give us a negative 24. And then when we multiply our z's together, we just have to add those exponents. 10 plus 7 plus 3 would be 20. So we have negative 24 y z.